Hello, my name is Jorb. This is Behringer's DeepMind 12. And we're going to do today, we're going to walk through creating a few patches from scratch. We're going to start with the default patch of the DeepMind 12. I'm going to walk you through every step in my process while I make a few different patches. And the ones we're going to focus on today uh, first will be a pretty traditional analog sound sort of a brassy, sort of a stringy <laughs> thing. If I had to call it anything, I'd call it a brass. Uh, then we're going to fake uh, sidechain compression, sidechain modulation uh, with the kick drum uh, of your track or drum machine or whatever it is. Uh, third thing we're going to do, I'm not going to plan it very much. It's just going to be the most ambient washy sort of a pad I can figure out. Uh, this is a new video and sound setup. This is the second time I've recorded this video. <laughs> So if you have any comments about that, say, hey, this was weird, this timestamp, this sounded good, this sounded bad, um, anything related to the way I'm producing these, I want them to be good, I want them to be better. So as soon as it hits your mind, uh, I'd appreciate it if you put in the comments. So what we're really going to get out of this video is a look into somebody who's very comfortable with the deep mind. What does it look like when they sit down with a goal in mind? Uh, and you'll get some good tips about the modulation matrix, some of the options as far as controlling sound, changing things over time, manipulating things that are built into the DeepMind without the modulation matrix, uh, some tips about uh, what makes it unique and weird, some tips about synthesis in general that should matter beyond this keyboard and these examples. So I'm doing my favorite thing, meandering. <laughs> Let's get right into it. Our first patch is going to be a pretty traditional analog brass, maybe a string sound if we change a few parameters. And the first thing you'll want to do when you're making anything is click through until you find a program you're comfortable getting rid of. Another option for that, if you hold program, you'll get a few shortcuts. If you press global, then we have this <laughs> um, program browser. Uh, and if you don't have default programs set in already, one of the other shortcuts, hold program, Press compare, and you'll go to the initialized patch. Great. One of the first things I do on the DeepMind 12, if you'll notice, velocity sensitivity is already part of the default patch. I would rather turn it on if I decide I want it. So let's go into the VCA and velocity sensitivity down to zero. You can do that with the encoder here or the data entry slider. And we can't hear it yet, but there's also some in the VCF. Let's zero that out. Back to our main screen. Okay, pretty good. And then we'll go just to one of the waveforms. I'll probably leave it on the sawtooth because I think it sounds wonderful. <laughs> but I like to get it a little simpler than even they begin with. Okay, and so first things first with a brass patch, we're going to want a little bit of a lower cutoff and some envelope contribution of the filter. I'll do that on most patches. Okay, and then we'll go to the envelopes here. And I'm sure you'll know these four sliders will affect whichever envelope you have selected, but you can select more than one at a time, even all three. So let's do VCA and VCF together, and then zero everything out, get our sustain up, and a little bit of attack and a little bit of decay, and get the release so it's nice. And I like the sustain a little lower, and I want the VCF to lag behind the VCA a little bit, so we have volume that's present for us to hear it opening up. I want a little quicker attack on the VCA, even quicker. Sustain, get VCF a little lower. Okay, I like that for our waveforms, especially to start with. Excuse me, our envelopes, especially to start with. And one of the first things I like to do is add a little bit of movement. So let's do pitch modulation. By default, it's routed to LFO1. And one of the, another thing about the DeepMind default initialized patch uh, that I think is a little confusing, so let's play a chord. 
yikes. You hear that they're all uh, modulating, they're all moving independently, each voice. And we can display what's happening. So if I just click through one note, you'll see me cycling through the voices. And if we look at the light here on LFO1, it's changing every time I press a key. Well, those are symptoms of the phase by default being polyphonic. That means there's 12 LFO1s, one for each voice. Uh, and they're not necessarily synced. So if we move this to mono, what we see here on the LFO is reflected for every parameter we're playing. Uh, I think that's a little easier to understand and a little closer to what I would want, the behavior I would expect out of a polysynth. While we did that for LFO 1, let's do it for LFO 2 as well. Back to our main screen. And another trick for the LFOs, if you hold edit and move the rate slider, you can see we can slide through all the shapes. So let's do sine, it's a little smoother. I like it uh, sometimes, I prefer it to the triangle. Oops, didn't need to do that. Let's go back. Now, if I want to be a little more precise <laughs> than the fader, once you move the fader, you can then dial it in here with the encoder. And this little diagram over here will show you where you're moving relative to what it was and where the fader is relative to the actual selection with the encoder here. So the zero at the bottom is what it was, 49 is what it is now. And see, that's our rep representation of the fader. If I move above it, it points up. If I move below it, it points down. So let's dial it in with the encoder. Whoops, moved the wrong fader. That sounds pretty good to me, but I want a little bit of delay time, and that will change how far after we, how long after we press a key does the envelope start to affect anything, and this graphic is actually a wonderful visual of it. So let's make it more dramatic so we can hear it. <laughs> it's too dramatic. Great, we can kind of hear it fade in too. So let's try and tune it. That sounds pretty good to me. I realize I want a little less envelope contribution from the filter. a lot of that. I want a little movement of the filter as well, but not too quick. And by default, this slider here is pointing to LFO2. That's actually pretty good. Let's zoom in more and a little slower. Let's bring it up again. <laughs> and I find myself doing this a lot with anything with slow attack. That's just one of the things that I find myself liking to do when I'm performing. And a good trick, you can have that fade in like that by default. And the way we'll do that is with the portamento time and here in the voice menu, which is underneath the header that says poly, press edit twice. And we want to change our portamento mode to fixed. If we change it to fixed minus, and then here's our time, see this time goes up while I move the uh, potentiometer over here. Let's make it really dramatic so we can hear it. But fixed minus five, it'll start the five semitones below. Whatever it is you're playing, let's make it even more dramatic. Here's above two whole octaves and wow, longer. <laughs> Shorten that and go to something much more reasonable. Let's try minus two. Can't really notice it. Do you hear the difference? Here's no time. Here's a lot of time. Somewhere in the middle. 
I like that a lot. Nice and subtle. And just to see what it sounds like, let's add a little bit of resonance. Oh, that's already too much. Let's add the smallest amount <laughs> with the encoder. Might not even be noticeable, but we'll leave it in. Let's hear what it sounds like with the two pole filter. I kind of like that. I think I want snappier attack on ECF. Close. pitch modulation. I realize right then that I want a little bit of reverb. And I think that might be the last thing we'll do. Uh, and this is true with a lot of things on the deep mind. One of the first things you'll do is turn it down. <laughs> By default, it's a little, oops, this is what we want, a little bombastic. And even all the way down here sounds good to me. partial to this, but I want it to sound a little more like a vintage quote-unquote-unquote synth sound would. And so we're going to add a chorus because that's what's on the Juno and that's the one people like. It sounds good, but I think it makes more sense for our effect order to have the chorus before the reverb as if it was the final step in our um, hardware synth and then our external effect is the reverb. So we can move these if we hold effects and then click up. <laughs> and you see me doing this just out of habit. We don't have that mapped to anything, but let's map it to something it can get to by default. We go to the VCF edit here. Mod, wheel, LFO, depth. Turn that up. I'll speed up the rate. Wonderful. <laughs> I'm happy with that. you guys are too. So if you followed along, great. And now to finish everything out, hit right, and this is what's there now, and it'll be, excuse me, this is the slot you're saving into, and you'll be replacing it with whatever you name this. And so let's click one, two, three for lowercase, B, S. Perfect. <laughs> I'm not that good at playing keyboards. <laughs> that was horrible and embarrassing. We're going to leave it in. How do I get a thumbs up to you guys? We're going to leave it in and move on to the next one. This is a quick postscript, so to speak, <laughs> for the first one I recorded. I forgot about two things that I think are pretty important. Uh, uh, keyboard contribution to the filter. So this graphic is here is showing is doing a great job of showing what it does. The higher it is, 
uh, the higher up the keyboard you are, the more open your cutoff will be. So here it is with nothing. Here it is full. I think it opens things up, makes it lively. Okay, let's focus. <laughs> And then I never added velocity sensitivity back in. In my personal preference, I like to have it pretty high for the VCF and not quite as high for the VCA. You get the idea. Thank you. There's my postscript. <laughs> okay, so next up, we're going to fake a side chain compression sound. So just like before, we'll move on to a default program, old program, press compare. And our old tricks, turn off velocity sensitivity and turn off, oops. Let's do our modify phase without being so schnazzy. Okay, and we'll do both waveforms for this. And we'll throw in the sub oscillator. So here's, these are both off. Sub oscillator is always a square. The tone mod. You can change your waveform, your harmonic content. I like to leave it as a square, which is all the way at the bottom, around here. It's an octave below, which you have normally. So let's try just the sawtooth and the um, sub-octave, which is a square. A little busy right now, but let's do our first things first. Get our filter frequency down in the middle. Maybe a little higher. And I will do my same trick, VCA and VCF together. Bring everything up a little bit. Quicker attack. It's kind of muddy with the sub oscillators. So let's take it out for now. A little fuller with the second waveform here. A little bit of envelope. And for the trick we're going to do, we want a pretty simple basic sound like this. We'll leave it on. <laughs> and a lot of our, um, a lot of the fun, a lot of the action is going to happen with um, uh, the mod range tricks and what we're going to do with the LFOs. So we'll use LFO 1 for this. We want it to be... Synced to, sorry, I totally just blanked. I'm going to leave that in as well. <laughs> we want it to be synced to our rate. So we'll do ARP sync on, clock divide, do quarter notes. So as we move rate up and down, our LFO is changing. Okay, and because we want to pretend that this is sidechain compression, we want it to work, uh, excuse me, with four on the floor. That's why we're doing this quarter note thing. And when you hear compression, it'll cut off abrupt abruptly and then slide in. So the waveform we want is this ramp. We'll get our rate about here. And what we want that to modulate is going to be our VCA, our volume. We could do the filter. Uh, it'd be truer to what we're trying to emulate, we're trying to trick if we do the VCA. And so uh, one of the tricks when you're here in the mod matrix, if you hold mod, and then press edit here for the LFOs, it becomes our source. If we hold it still and then move the fader for the VCA, we get VCA active, and that's the volume of the active VCAs. And we could just put it all the way up to 100. There we go. Kind of works already. Ah, 
I shouldn't be changing right here. See, look, you watched me make a, mis make a mistake. I shouldn't be changing right here because it changes your subdivision. And that's not what we want. We want that to stay at, whoops, quarter notes. We want to change our rate here. Okay, good, pretty convincing. I would like, let's go back to our main screen so you can see what I'm changing. A little more release. That's good, and I would like a little bit of reverb. Let's put that at the bottom in case we want more effects. The room is a little busy. Oops. We'll do what we always do. Turn it down. Change the envelope contribution a little less. Change the filter a little lower. Kind of like that. I kind of like that. Okay, and so to better show <laughs> my simulated trick, we have an assistant at Korg Volca Sample. I hope that is all on camera. And so I just have a simple beat. We're gonna click it in time. I missed. <laughs> it is synced via MIDI. Excuse me if I didn't mention that. Ah, <laughs> I'm coming up with this right now. I really like the idea of being able to move my, um, uh, change the, the chord we're playing just with this, but I don't like where it's at right now. So to change our pitch bend options, our pitch bend uh, range, that's here in the voice menu underneath poly. Let's go one more time to pitch parameters. Pitch bend range, when we move it up, let's change it to three up. I also want to change our pitch bend down range to go up and let's make it five. And you hear a little bit of click because it's so abrupt. If we go to the LFO edit and change the slew rate a little bit, it averages your values, the modulation amount, the CV, so to speak, of coming out of the LFO over time. So as we increase it, it sort of drops a little softer. But we want it to still be abrupt, but not as abrupt. So let's try. Five works pretty good. I think I also want to be able to have it fade in. I want to be able to bring it in so that the first one I play, I don't have to try and look at the light and time it. So the way we can do that, let's go back into our modulation matrix, change this depth to zero by default, and then our second um, modulation destination, we'll hold, edit, and move the mod wheel to make that, oops, looks like I did that already for the first one. Let's go back to LFO1, hold, mod, move our mod wheel to make that our source. We want our destination to be, and we'll move the data slider all the way to the up, all the way to the highest position. There's our effects, and then here is mod one depth. So as we move the mod wheel up, we'll bring in the effect of uh, our first connection, which is LFO one to the active VCAs. So all that together, trick pretty convincing if you ask me if you don't have access to hardware compressors or you're not working in a DAW I think this is a good way to get that effect <laughs> wonderful 
I meandered a little bit, but I still think that was pretty tight. <laughs> <laughs> On to the next patch. Okay. A little break. It might look a little brighter in here. But let's jump into our ambient patch. So first things first, I'll program, press compare. We do what we always do. Get rid of velocity sensitivity on the VCA in the VCF. My personal most important tip, change the LFO phases both to mono. And here, just one waveform we shall begin. Okay, so here's our envelope trick again. And because we're doing something ambient, we're doing a pad, we're doing something washy, we want it to be slow, long envelopes. And we'll leave the, I'm changing the filter and the envelope contribution, so that's just going to happen instead of being all the way wide open. But uh, we'll get a little slow attack, kind of a long decay, kind of a long release. I already can feel I want more decay. I like to bring my VCA a little bit quicker than my VCF, so we can hear that change in timbre. We hear the filter opening up. We have enough volume there for it to be a present thing. I like that. We want them a little longer both. Remembering, hit them both and move our VCA back. Good. A little less envelope contribution. A little less. that as a starting place. Uh, I normally wouldn't do effects early on in my design process, but because this is an ambient sound, uh, it's going to be a big part of what we notice. So, haha, -ha, we'll use the ambient reverb. And you know what? That's not very busy. I normally would turn the mix down on things, but I won't with this. I like a little bit of a quicker pre-delay. Excuse me. <coughs> we'll do half of what it was. Longer decay. Increase the size. I think the dampening is pretty good. Increase the mod and hear what that does. Oops. I'm not noticing it that much. It might be because our filter's pretty low. some. Ah, there it is. Let's get that back down, get our size low as well. I like that. We're going to push our VCF attack a little slower as well. Good. Now we need a little movement. LFO 2 by default is coming to our filter LFO. I like that. One of my favorite tricks for something big and moving and ambient is modulating modulators. <laughs> so here's our trick again. We hold the mod button, then we press LFO 1 edit, that is our source, and we move the slider for LFO rate. Alpha 2 rate, and now we have that link connected. Increase the amount a little bit. And if we watch the lights over here, we can see what it's doing. As this goes up, this speeds up. I think that goes a pretty far away to giving things life, to giving things movement. Good. Let's add the slightest amount of pitch modulation. And I move the fader up and all the way down so it's what we're focused on. And then I just barely move it up with this. I don't know if I can even hear it. <laughs> so here's a trick while you're working on something. If you want to hear without the effects, you change this routing option to bypass. And so.
just barely. Let's try a little more. No, that's almost too much. Okay, let's leave it very subtle. Um, another thing I'm going to do here in the voice options underneath the header for poly, let's change our oscillator parameter oops, and drift rate to be non-zero. That just introduces a little bit of a simulated warble, <laughs> a little bit of analog inaccuracy, so to speak, uh, that normally you wouldn't find with digitally con controlled oscillators. Let's still keep it subtle, though. Great. Great. And I think I want another LFO, but we already have jobs for both of them. So my first tip for this is don't be afraid to use uh, more than one source on the same destination. So what we're going to do, we're going to add our square waveform, and we're going to modulate the pulse width with both LFO1 and LFO2. So we'll do two at a time, hold mod, press our edits, bring them up a little bit, and then make the destination the pulse width depth. And then let's do we have any options in here? Let's make the source LFO two. You know what? I'm gonna change my mind. So let's just go oscillator one. Yeah, no, this is what we want. I'm sorry, that's pitch modulation. Woo! Wow, let's leave that mistake in there too. <laughs> if I don't, this is where I'll cut to. Okay, we have the destination of both is pulse width modulation depth. I don't want it to go all the way up to full where we lose it, but I like having that movement in there. Let's let's bias this a little bit towards LFO1. A little bit less from 2. down our LFO being affected by LFO2 because I wanted to hear just this pulse width modulation. I am into that. Let's add another effect. Chorus we've done. Let's do flanger. Ooh, I'm still on bypass. And I'm going to make this speed related to our rate here. Let's make it quarter notes. Uh, and just so we can hear it on its own, I'm going to bring the mix to zero for our reverb. I'm going to make it a little slower. Let's make it half notes. A little less of this. back up. Sounds pretty good to me. What I'm going to do now is change our effect routing. Let's do... So 1, 2, and 3 are all going to be independent. So let's do chorus here. This is almost too much, <laughs> but just to simulate this, just to just to give us a chance to show these options. We'll do chorus and a phaser as well. We'll have them all on. So the way this is working, these lines are all stereo still, okay? So out of the synth goes through the flanger. Separately it goes through the chorus. Separately it goes through the phaser. If I had it 
all the way here, it would go through the flanger, and then the chorus, and then the phaser, and then the reverb. But if we do these three, will happen independently, get mixed together, and then go through the reverb. It might be too much. I'm gonna make all of their speeds related to um, our rate here. This is the phaser, but none of them will match. I'm going to turn down the mix of the reverb again so we can try and hear what we're doing. The phaser's a little too quick. Let's just let's do a whole bar. And increase the depth. do insert, it'll only go through the effects chain. We won't have a dry signal as well. I almost like that better. I think we need another mod. And we've used our LF. I think I started this earlier, but I didn't finish my thought. <laughs> But we're out of LFOs. These are both pretty busy. Let's add a third one. And the way we can do that, we press mod here twice. We're on our mod envelope. We'll change the trigger to loop and bring sustain and release all the way down to zero. And we draw our shape. Let's use the curve for the first time here. Let's try and make it kind of like a sine. If we do that and then change our times. There we go. And what will happen, and I'll, I'll put it in the mod matrix as something really obnoxious and really obvious, just so we can hear it to start with. So let's do, uh, let's do, let's just do pitch of oscillator one. Yeah. <laughs> let's go all the way to bypass. And you hear that shape. <laughs> over and over. So let's make sure we're not doing that on pitch anymore because that is horrible. <laughs> but we'll use this to modulate. Uh, let's point it to... Hmm, what can we do? You know what I think I'm going to do? We're going to go back into our effects section. Let's make one and two. Yeah, that's what I want. So we'll do flander and chorus. We'll change the... I like the phaser, but we'll change it. We'll make this a delay. Let's do the tell ray delay. Oops, bypass, nope. We want send for now. And one of the things I know you can change on this is the delay time. And while we do that, actually, let's Turn the mix off for everything just so I can demonstrate. And then back into the Telray delay. You kind of hear that? <laughs> Let's increase our sustain. Oop, that'll run away. <laughs> so let's get our sustain reasonably high put our delay somewhere in the middle and back into our mod matrix. We can send our envelope three, which is our mod, which is moving like um, right now like an LFO. We can send that to any of the options for our effects. So this is effect three, it will make it delay time. We'll make it a little less dramatic. sound pretty good so let's get all our other effects back on great back 
effect for mod matrix. Let's fill up the mod matrix. That'll be our goal. Let's do something with the mod wheel. Hmm. What can we do? Ooh, I have an idea. But it's not the mod wheel. I'm so sorry. Let's do the pitch bend. And what we're going to do is turn off any actual pitch bending from the pitch bend wheel. So we can use it as a... See, nothing. We can use it as its own uh, performance tool, so to speak. And we'll also make this, let's mess with the delay, and let's make it sustain. Let's crank it all the way up. And I'll start to run away like that while he holds it up. <laughs> I like that. a little less. Let's slow both those down. Man, I love this delay. Let's change the tone way up. There we go. That runs away a little quicker. Try insert again, just the effect. It's a little hollow. Let's add some dry back into both of these, and that's what our mix will do for us. Let's match them. Still kind of hollow. So it's back to send. That's good. Let's add a little bit of our oscillator too. Let's sync it. And what sync means is every time this starts a new waveform, or every time a new cycle begins in these waveforms, it'll reset oscillator too. Let's go to bypass so we can hear it. It'll never be out of tune, but it'll change the harmonic content over time. And you know what? Let's modulate that. Let's send LFO 1 to the pitch of oscillator 2. Yes, I like that a lot. Back to send. change our reverb to, I think there's a delay and reverb together. Yes. Wonderful. Like this is the one to our right here. I'm very much enjoying this. I will finish maxing out our mod matrix here just because I said I would. And I just threw in a little keyboard contribution to the VCF. And then let's do one more thing. I'm going to bring it on screen now. <laughs> uh, this is a Old Blood Noise Endeavors Expression Slider, which I just have. Is it even in camera? Yes, it is. <laughs> I'm using this in place of a foot controller. 
so I can have it up here and you can see what I'm changing. But let's make that something really easy to hear. I think I want to go to foot control, turn it up. Let's make it something really obvious. DCF frequency. All the way up. Ooh, is it not foot control? Expression. There we go. back down to where it was. I like the way that you get that two seconds, of, not really two seconds, but that little break before you get a splash from the delay. <laughs> I think that works pretty well. And let's add a little bit of, we didn't use the mod wheel for anything. Let's use the mod wheel for, you know, let's just scroll through until we find something that sounds good. <laughs> Ooh, let's do oscillator drift. Let's make it super dramatic. One final thing, and I'm only realizing it now because I hadn't talked about it, but let's change our polyphony to unison two and watch our voices here. We'll play one note and we get two voices. Of course that means. When we get six notes we can play, but they're uh, doubled up. So we have everything in our oscillators twice. <laughs> Every time we hit a single key. If we turn up unison detune, uh, it will detune. Oscillators, we get that B8 frequency. We'll leave that about there, and that's almost like one final modulation source. So now, with a full mod wheel, a full effects section, God knows how much else, let's get washy. <laughs> exactly what I'm going for. Hopefully my camera is not full. Looks like I have a minute-ish to go. Maybe more. So, I would like to say once again thank you for sticking around, soaking this in. I hope it was helpful. I never know if it's going to be. Uh, I appreciate all the comments I've been getting. It's really weird to know that, hey, maybe I am teaching people things. So, if there's anything you saw during this video where you said, man, I wish you had done that, I wish you had taught me about that, uh, put it in the comments and I'll do it. I'm getting better at making these, I think. <laughs> and so I will happily do some things that I haven't done. If there's a specific patch, a specific sound you'd like to do, hit me up. Uh, I know a couple people asked for generative type things. Um, I think there's a great demo of that by Oscillator Sync out there already. I don't know if he calls it generative. I'll put a link to that because I think it's better than I would do and no reason to cover the same ground. So anyway, I digress. I'm meandering as I always do. <laughs> Thank you for watching. If you like this, guess what? Subscribe if you like this or also like it. If you didn't like it, tell me and tell me why I want it to get better. Uh, if there's anything you want to see in the future, hit me up. Okay, all done. 
My name is Jorb. I love gear. This has been the DeepMind 12. Thanks for watching. Ha, ha, ha.